a variable is something, an input to the problem, right? right. And that's bounded some set of values, right? So in this case, it's bounded 0 and 90. But, you know, this could be panel width. And you're specifying essentially the range of inputs that you want the optimizer to search through. The it's lower the, number it's the upper and lower bound. Yeah. The limits on infinite okay. value. It's a like integer, so zero, one, two, or no. Well, how could you can you explain how continuous and discrete variables are handled? Yeah. Yep. So uh, for for continuous variable, the only input that you need is the lower limit and upper limit, and the uh, the uh, algorithm will choose any number in between that range because it's continuous. It can choose any value in that range. But uh, for discrete variables, let's say you have a list of numbers from like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When you're selecting that, there is an, another, excuse me, there is another way of doing that uh, on the list that even when uh, the optimizer search, it finds the uh, number which is the closest through that list. So your list will be indexed. Uh, each number, let's say you have different types of windows in that, that list, right? So you have a single pane window, double pane window, and triple pane with pane window. And you're, uh, in the current version of uh, Optimal, uh, when you do the range from 0 to 3, either time, uh, any time it, uh, round, it rounds the number to the, the, or floors the number to the shortest integer number close to that, and uh, take that index from that list. So, Mohammed, you're saying for them to create their own integer list and use that as the input? That's right. So, let's say for here, I just, I just. And so, your number is not selecting the actual integer; it's doing a real number and then the closest to and maps it to an integer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So, Mohammed, hold on a second. I'm trying to explain this. So, so the idea uh, is it only handles continuous variables, right? So. If you have, say you have three different window types in his example that you're choosing from, you know, you have, you know, double glaze, triple glaze, and single glaze. Well, in that case, in order to have this optimizer handle that, you'd say we have a, a, a continuous variable that goes from zero to three, and that's mapping to its one if it's single glaze, two if it's double glaze, and three if it's triple glaze, and the optimizer is just rounding and picking that. He's writing a another block right now for it for us to yeah, speak. Perfect. So uh, let, let me explain it. Just, just assume that these are these are the items in the list that you want, like double pane, single pane, and triple pane windows, right? And uh, what it creates is it creates a list, right? And if I run it, uh, you see that each uh, because I didn't have I didn't insert anything here. Uh, it doesn't have those, but I make these strings just to show you how it works very quickly. So at the end, it comes up with uh, a list of uh, strings, right? And each item in list has an index. The double pane index is zero, single pane is one, and triple pane is two. For now, what you need to do is you create the lower limit zero and upper limit three. And the items would range between 0 and 3, right? And uh, when you floor the, uh, those numbers down, it would be 0, 1, or 2. And it will select the items from that list. I can, I can send you an example on that if, if you think it's, uh, it's difficult to understand how it works. But for the next... I think that's that, good, uh, Mohammed. There may be some follow-up questions, but... You can keep moving. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, workshop. Yeah, at the end, I will. I will send. I will show you the email address for our team that you can send your question, for sure. Uh, so uh, after having the inputs for the parameters, uh, we have we need to insert the fitness function that we want to do. The good thing for uh, optimal right now is you can insert your fitness functions very easily as a uh, as a custom node and uh, put all of the fitness functions that you have in a list and put it in the, in the, uh, in the uh, chart that we have. So here, our uh, fitness function works. We need to select the face. So this node just selects the face. The reason that I 
have it out of the uh, fitness uh, function is just one I want it to be shown in, in, in the background because when I insert it in the custom node it doesn't show it here. Uh, and in the in the custom node it's very simple. We get our uh, variables list and we create the points as the same as the images that I explained. Then I create a line that intersects with the surface and get the Z value for that surface and outputs from and get the result out of the custom node. So the result of this custom node would be the Z values for this point. And the reason that we insert it in a list is because we want to have multiple objectives for other examples. Very simply, we just add uh, items to the list and we have different uh, fitness functions inserted. I will show you an obje a multi-objective example as well. So, the input of this, uh, are, you, are you familiar with the way that functions work in Dynamo? Can you guys hear the question? Options? Functions. Okay, so uh, uh, just here the way that we do is we use function but apply. We get the initial solution list. I, I will show it to you. It has the x values, it has the y values, and the fit, uh, fitness function values are zero here in this node. Uh, we get these two first items, which are x and y values, and uh, we apply this fitness function to those values and create the z values here. So this is the result of the z values based on those two inputs and the fitness function that we generate here. If you want to make change in optimal, the only thing that you need to change is the fitness function and the variables and the number of objectives and the uh, population size. From here, everything will be uh, will be done automatically. It's the same in all uh, optimization uh, uh, problems. And I've been, you can see it later in other examples that I show. From this part of the chart, is almost the same in all of the examples. Uh, wow. Then. Well, hold on, just to be clear, the fitness function in this case is to minimize Z value? Yep, so the objective is to minimize the Z value. The fitness function is getting the Z values, right? Is getting the Z, getting Z value. So it's populating it. So we've got, we've got two variables, which are the X and Y coordinates of that surface. The fitness function is finding the Z value of that, of that surface. And then the objective of the optimization is to try to minimize the z value, right? So it's trying to find the lowest point in that surface. Yeah, exactly. So why do people? So uh, all fitness is just another name for a second function. Yeah, it comes from the What was that? I didn't hear that. If if I need to answer. No, we're good, Mohammed. Keep going. Okay, cool. So. Uh, you remember as the first step of the genetic algorithm, uh, what we had to do was to generate the initial population list. Here, after this, uh, creating all these nodes, we can create the initial population list. That you can see it here. We have the x values for this example, y values, and the z values are combined to this list. So this population includes all the information that we need. Uh, this part of the graph uh, is uh, generate the iteration part that I talked that in each generation we improve the solution. So if there is a while loop here that iterates through the process for us. There is a completion check loop uh, that shows how many times we want to go. I set it one here just to show you in the background that before doing the uh, optimization, nodes are all scattered on the surface. And if I increase it, let's say I do it 50 times, uh, the result uh, now because the number of uh, number of items is very low, it is stuck in the in the, the local optimum. But if I increase the number of uh, number of population, let's say 200, it will it will iterate 50 times the 100 population and uh, it will find up the global uh, solution for us, which is here on the bottom of the surface, if I show you. 
because I have multiple versions of Revit open, it's a little slow. I prepared all of those in different Revit files to not open and close Revit files. So it got a little slow now. But anyway, it, it shows the result uh, down here at, at the bottom. Uh, that shows that after 50 iterations, all of the points are married to the optimal solution here. This is also a good point, guys. When you're starting, keep your population size pretty small to make sure it's working. So you can see that the, all of the points are gathered here at the bottom. It's, when you zoom in, it Dynamo doesn't zoom in, it uh, makes the points larger. But I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's here. I can well, Mohammed, how, how come none of the points found uh, other local minimum? Uh, can you repeat that? Oh, it's only showing the best. OK. Never mind. OK. So the iteration, uh, the iteration process, you can change the number here. You, based on your problem, you can increase it or decrease it. Uh, the NSG function that they have here is the generation loop. What it gets is it gets the list of lower limits and upper limits that you created here. Because in each iteration, we generate some random uh, solution again. And it should be the solutions should be in that range of lower limits and upper limits. That's why we, go, we get those in this node. And we get the fitness function here because we need to uh, find the result for find the fitness result for each population. And then uh, this one is connected to the while loop. Our initial population list would be connected because every time we improve the initial population list from the previous step. And for the first step is the very first random thing that we created. So we need this one also in the loop. Uh, so the loop iterates through this process and generates the result. And the last part is just to export the result to a CSV file and also create the node and points on, Dy uh, on Dynamo for visualization. So this part is not very specific to optimization, just for visualizing and documenting the result. Uh, if there is no question on this, I'll show you a multi-objective optimization and then show you an example which is related, more related to building and construction. OK, I'd say go ahead and open up the multi-objective example and We'll see if there's okay. any questions in the meantime. Uh, so this, the second example is uh, the mathematical uh, optimization example. Let me show you the, gra the chart first. So we have two functions, like mathematical functions, not very difficult function. Uh, the first one is x to the power of 2, and the second one is x minus 2 to the power of 2. And our variable is uh, changing x value to find the minimum value for these two functions at the same time. Now, as you can see, uh, let me take the pen. As you can see, if I select, uh, like, let's say, the x, the x value here, the function 1 would be, the value for function 1 would be this much, and the value for function 2 would be larger. So if I go somewhere here, the, uh, the value for both of them would be 1. And somewhere here, the value for function 2 is smaller. The value for function 1 is very large. And if I go somewhere this way or this way, both of the fitness functions are getting large. So if I go here, this one is large. The other one is very large. Like, we cannot draw it here. So it shows that uh, how, the, how the results are uh, the criteria of both functions are competing to each other to improve the result. At the time that we have competing criteria, uh, that's the time that we have a Pareto chart that shows the, uh, a set of results that you can you can see for the optimization uh, analysis. So uh, if I show you in the in Dynamo how it works, as you can see, very similar shape. First, we have the variables that you can define. Here we have the generation loop, and here is the creating the, the points on Dynamo for visualization. The, the difference is we have the population size 100. As you can see, because we have two objective functions, this number is changed to 2. And uh, we have just one variable, which is the x value. So we have one input for each of these lists. 
And uh, for fitness functions, we have two functions. The first one is very simple code for x to the power of 2. And the second one is very simple code for x minus 2 to the power of 2. So these two functions, if I, if I did 100 population, uh, and just for one iteration, I will show you how the result would be. And then, OK. Uh, so this is the result for one iteration. And if I show you, zoom in, and let me see if I can draw here. Yeah. So let's say this is the x and y chart. And uh, these results, uh, like let's say this result and this result. You want to see which one of them is better. Uh, this result for F1 and F2, it has a smaller value, but this result for F1 and F2, uh, it has a larger value, and we want to minimize the pro uh, uh, our solutions. So this first result uh, dominates the other results, so this is a better one for, for our solution, and we can get rid of the ones that are, uh, uh, that are not dominated. So if I uh, show the if I show the graph uh, and run it for, let's say, 100 times. There is no Pareto there is only so, so you can see that the Pareto uh, graph is created here. It's just points that I create in Dynamo just to show it. You see that these are all the good solutions for us. Here, because it's mathematical approach, you cannot uh, you cannot see the benefit, but I will show you a very quick uh, example. Well, well, sorry, you you had the uh, can you bring up that um, that diagram that you had of the results? There you go. See, so not looking at these, I think it makes more sense, right? So you have the values of fitness function one and the values of fitness function two. If you treated those as different units, for example, then you have this area here, which is colored darkly, which is the relationship between these two, right? So depending on your preference for each of these, you might have a different solution along that range. So if, if I show the if I show the example with building, it might be better to understand. This is a sample case that comes with Revit. Here, I, the example that I created, I, uh, there are some windows here. I, I want to change the size of those windows to make the, uh, make the building, uh, to find the, find the size for those windows that has the best energy use and also the best daylighting results, right? Very simple example that I created here. I created the Dynamo uh, node. It's a little more complex. It has more inputs. It's changing the size of the window and also the uh, the, the material uh, for the for the curtain walls and also the windows, the dynamo chart. And you can see, like it it shows that I just created some some images that shows on this side of the building, the window sizes are increasing, and uh, every time in each generation, it creates the result for that. And uh, this graph shows that, the, like you can see, the result, the, the uh, effect, effects of result on the uh, daylighting of the building when when you change the window size and also the window types, the curtain wall types. So in this video, like I created a very quick video. It's based on the older version of Dynamo, like it's version six, but you can quickly see. I will go ahead a little bit. So the building, the windows are here. I, I open Dynamo uh, and the code that works with this. Uh, as uh, like here, we have two objectives. One is building energy use, uh, annual energy use, and the other one is the daylighting. That uh, the percentage of the uh, let's say the lead uh, criteria result for daylighting. Uh, I, I use here. I use. Uh, two nodes on Dynamo. The first one is connected to daylighting analysis on uh, on raw system for Autodesk, and the other one is Green Building Studio. So every time in each generation, the model uh, the uh, the code creates a GBXML file, which is the energy file, 
it sends it to green building studio at the same time it creates the daylighting input file it sends it to the uh, rendering system for uh, for uh, autodesk rendering system and gets back the result so after after running this code uh, after a few times i skip this and show my uh, slides i think it shows it better this is the result of the uh, all simulations uh, this the the, the x axis is energy and the, y, uh, the daylighting, I, uh, there's a typo here, sorry. Uh, the x-axis is daylighting and the y-axis is energy. And uh, we want to, uh, this corner is the best part for us. Uh, so we want to move to this part of the chart, which is lower energy and higher daylighting. And as you can see, at the very beginning, the random initials were somewhere like all scattered all over the model, uh, the graph. But after a few iterations, uh, the results are moving to to the best solution. And the yellow and uh, yellow uh, circles with uh, green uh, lines around them is the best solution, which you can see it's very similar to the Pareto optimal that David was talking about. So this is the these are the best solutions that we get as a as a solution set out of this this uh, tool. And so the, uh, you can see axis in this case is daylighting. It's just uh, it's just a typo, right? Yeah. yeah, this is daylighting. Sorry. Yeah. So this uh, is daylighting. What, what's the node you're using for daylighting? Uh, uh, there is a node for daylighting. It's named daylighting on Dynamo. Yeah. Do you know yes. what I did? What's that? Never mind. I'll ask later. Okay. Yeah, so the daylighting node, uh, uh, like I, I worked with Dynamo team and uh, helped them a lot to make it improve. Uh, so uh, I, I, ha I also created a daylighting package on Dynamo packages that you can download and it shows the whole workflow how you can use the daylight. It's a little tricky to use the daylighting node. So maybe that package, if you search for a daylighting package, you can download that one. It has all the necessary uh, nodes in one graph. Uh, so, as uh, as you can see here, this uh, yellow result uh, is or the result that comes out of this simulation, and uh, we cannot most of them we cannot say which one is better than the other one. So here comes the designer and makes the final decision based on the criteria of the project. Either he prefers to give more value to daylighting than energy. He goes like he goes this way. Uh, this part of the chart, which is the, which has the better daylighting result, but higher values on energy chart, which is like more expense on uh, uh, annual energy, or uh, he prefers to have a lower cost on energy use, uh, and he sacrifices uh, daylighting and goes with lower daylighting. In this chart, as, as you can see, these two criteria are competing, so the final decision should be made by designer based on the design criteria of his project to choose the best solution and also maybe based on the uh, form uh, how it looks which is not shown here right so he doesn't want to create something that's ugly but good per per uh, with good performance so all of these uh, based on the uh, changes that's been made on Revit and also the result of the simulation the, the designer can make the final decision okay well uh, we're um we're past time here, so this is good though to see go back the image. Where there's a little bit of a latency, but you guys can see it, you know, the mapping from your credo to the actual design solution. Yeah. So any final questions, guys? Mohammed, awesome. Yes, thank you, Mohammed. Thanks. Well, yeah, I'm happy and uh, anytime if you have a question, uh, we have a very small group in our school that are working on this. Just email to this email with, uh, and uh, we'll get back to you with, uh, as soon as we can. Say hi to Wei Yan for me. Sure. Thanks a lot. It's great to meet you again.